Hello, my friends. <clears throat> I know I've uh, touched on the topic I'm going to speak about previously, but I want to expand on it a little bit today. And that is that uh, you, you, the real you, is not in that which you call your body. I'll repeat. The real you is not in that which you call your body or even that which you call your body mind. Uh, there's no little beepark somewhere here or behind the eyes or in the brain looking out at this world, um, speaking to you on this uh, video. So who or what is speaking to you? Uh, in this video uh, using this as an apparatus that's the fundamental question I think of our existence so you know every religion in a way says your soul leaves the body when you die and I think that's uh, actually a misunderstanding uh, what we call the body-mind is a fluctuating experience within non-local awareness. And uh, let's try and break this down a little bit. Number one, the nature of non-local, or we can even say non-dual awareness. Non-dual philosophies such as Advaita Vedanta posit that the fundamental nature of reality is a singular unified consciousness. Something uh, that Schrodinger also said, he said, you cannot divide or multiply consciousness. So um, this awareness is seen as boundless. It has no boundaries, no form. It is eternal and beyond any division between subject and object. And this awareness is also frequently referred to as pure awareness. This awareness isn't thought of as something you have. It is the very ground of your being, the unchanging essence behind all experiences. And according to yogic philosophy, it is self-luminous. Awareness is aware of itself. So we can also understand this in terms of non-locality. The awareness is described in non-dual traditions as transcending the limitations of body and mind. It is not confined to the individual or the physical form that we identify with the individual, but it permeates all of existence. So the body-mind then is an experience. Uh, it is fluctuations. Your body and mind with their thoughts, sensations and emotions are understood as constantly changing patterns of fluctuations within the boundless field of awareness. They are like waves arising within and subsiding back into the ocean of consciousness. There are other ways to uh, understand this. So, but first of all, the body-mind is therefore not the source of awareness. The body-mind complex is not seen as the origin of awareness. Awareness doesn't come from the body or the thoughts. It is prior to them and fundamentally independent. The body-mind itself is an appearance within this awareness. So because awareness is the fundamental reality, the sense of separate self-located um, within the body-mind is viewed as an illusion. I'll repeat that. Because awareness is the fundamental reality, the sense of a separate self located within the body-mind is viewed as an illusion. There's no separate self within this body-mind. So the illusion is produced by the mind's ability to identify with the changing experiences of the body-mind complex. Um, other teachers, uh, um, modern teachers of Advaita, such as 
C. Rupert uh, Spira and others, Greg Good and Lucille Francis, um, have used the analogy of the screen. Imagine a moving screen. Sorry, imagine a movie screen. The screen is not moving. The characters on the screen are moving. So imagine a movie screen. The screen remains unchanged. So the screen on your computer or hand device, handheld device, remains unchanged. So um, even though various images, scenes, and stories are projecting on the screen, just right this moment uh, as an example we can use it so the body mind and its experiences are the images projected onto the screen your true nature or true self is the awareness within which everything arises and falls it is not subject to the same limitations as the body mind when we know this, uh, the Eastern traditions like Advait and Kashmir Shaivism, Advait Vedanta, Kashmir Shaivism, and many aspects of Buddhism, um, when we realize this, we actually have access to what is called liberation. Recognizing this truth um, leads to freedom from the suffering caused by the illusion of separation. And these concepts are not just meant for intellectual understanding. Non-dual practices like meditation and self-inquiry uh, aim to lead to a direct experience of the nature of awareness. Okay. Now, of course, there are variations of expression in this based on lineages. While there's a this while what I've said is a core concept. Keep in mind that different schools and teachers within Eastern non-dual traditions, Advait, uh, Vedanta, Zen Buddhism, Kashmir Shaivism, might have their own nuances in interpretation and emphasis. The description of awareness and its relationship to the body-mind may seem paradoxical to you and even counterintuitive, this is because of the limitations of language which make it difficult to fully express such a concept okay now uh, so who or what is speaking to you um, through this apparatus uh, of course we say that which is deepak is speaking through this apparatus at whatever is listening or watching so who is that what is that it's the same non-local uh, fundamental borderless infinite being that is speaking through a conditioned mind which is its own modifications the one consciousness is modifying itself as this body mind experience in the form of sensations images feelings and thoughts that are then identified as this changing body mind the apparatus through which the non-local one being is expressing a particular perspective a particular point of view and a particular ecosystem of relationships so what happens when this body mind is no longer functioning what happens to the screen once the story is over because every story has a beginning a middle and an end what happens when this particular story is over well the screen doesn't change so the fundamental you doesn't change even the residues of experience in the form of memory in the form of desire, in the form of imagination, the residues remain because those are like uh, imprints um, on, the, uh, on the screen of consciousness. They're the software as information and potential energy and potential 
expression as a particular body mind entangled with its um, world which are the stories of this particular body mind so at the cost of seeming a little esoteric that is called karma karma and the residues of memory sanskara imagination desires vasana these residues almost are like hidden software like potential codes for the recycling of experience that we call persons but it's happening in every sentient being uh, or that which we call a sentient being so energy recycles the matter that you call your body is recycling every atom in your body came from the crucible of burning stars what is now recycling in every biological apparatus nothing in your body belongs to you okay not the water not the matter not the atoms not the molecules not the force fields not the vehicles and particles in that infinite field uh, none of that belongs to you it's just recycling through you and so the thoughts and the feelings and the stories recycling through you and you call it what you will uh, recycling because everything in the universe is recycling or just call it some people call it reincarnation reincarnation so the infinite being reincarnates ever and through cosmic time and planetary time as um, as the biological apparatus mind body complex of sentient beings it recycles and it also evolves because in the infinite uh, consciousness uh, recycling and and evolution is a never ending horizon Okay, so what I've said may be very counterintuitive, but you can start practicing it, you know, look at any object, look at any object, look at your body, and replace the word object with the word experience, then replace the word experience with the word perception, and replace the word perception as a combination of sensations, then ask yourself, where are these sensations? what are they since what are they coming from and they're coming from the non-local field of awareness and these sensations are given names like a bracelet like a hand like this the book etc so what is recycling fundamental reality the infinite being through a particular mode of knowing and that mode of knowing results in a particular changing knower and a particular changing known, a particular changing scenery and a particular changing sphere, all in the infinite screen of divine being, infinite being. And at the heart of it, you are that. I am that. All this is that, and that alone is. And somehow that feels very liberating and uh, freeing. No constructs like birth, death, and all the nonsense that we partake of, which uh, of course creates so much conflict in the world. In that one being, there is infinite love, infinite understanding, infinite compassion, infinite joy, infinite equanimity, and no death. Okay, let me know what you think, and if this is useful.